Hello dear friends, in this video we'll talk about the full moon which will come on the 23rd of July. This full moon will trigger the signs of Aquarius and Leo and we'll talk about the best ways to use this particular full moon, what are the energies like and how we can take the best approach and the best strategy in order to achieve the most during this full moon phase. Also, we will discuss how this will affect each of the signs. So make sure to check your sun and rising sign in order to understand the main areas where you can focus on. So let's begin, first of all, with a quick reminder. What is a full moon and why it is so important? The full moon is an opposition between the sun and the moon happening on a regular basis approximately once a month and this happens to be also the culmination of the lunar cycle the lunar cycle begins with the new moon and approximately two weeks later there is always a full moon which brings the culmination of this particular lunar cycle and there are a couple of things that we can do at this point of culmination one is that we can see visible results from our efforts our work whatever we have been focusing on especially for the previous two weeks and it's also a time of realizations you may have some insights and some clarity and symbolically that comes from the idea that when we have a full moon this is the time when we can see the whole moon in the sky literally and the moon represents more subconscious things some kind of motives that we don't necessarily recognize consciously so when we have a full moon we can see the whole moon and we can also see in ourselves or in our world what is the reason for something we can understand better ourselves and other people or concrete situations so the full moon can bring you also clarity and it's a great time to make changes and release something if there is something in your life that you want to let go especially of course if that's related to fears or blockages or negative ideas the full moon is great for you to see the things that you are ready to let go and actually let them go so full moons can be quite intense as well emotions can be more unbalanced we may also overreact we might feel a little bit triggered but all of that is because the energies are really powerful and when that happens also it brings better possibilities for us to make significant changes so a couple of major things that we can focus on the, during the full moon one achieving tangible material results related to things we have done previously two is more clarity and insights and three releasing something letting go of something and making changes and all of that of course is also related to the signs which are triggered by a full moon this time the sun is in leo and the moon is in aquarius of course the sun is extremely powerful this is the home sign for the sun and that is beneficial because it can bring us more strength and also it brings more the focus on ourselves it's about our own individuality our own creativity our own self-expression on the other side when the moon is in aquarius it triggers topics like communities like the society and the culture we live in and the expectations of other people it's also related to our friends or the group that we feel we belong to and leo aquarius as an axis is related to our role in the group of people that we belong to or in some kind of social organization and we need to find the balance 
there might be people who are generally more self-focused and they are kind of used to be single players. They need to find a balance by bringing more understanding of other people's needs and what can benefit the group that that they belong to, which eventually will also benefit themselves. And overall, they need to bring a little bit more lightness, a little bit more freedom. Those are also very accentuated topics around this full moon. And if someone tends to be more a team player by nature and they seem to put the group first and their the interest of the group first and they may neglect themselves and they are more afraid of stepping up and expressing their individuality of course they need to bring more of this energy that is missing because a full moon is always about the balance and it's important what is kind of like the more natural to you and we are not saying that you should neglect it or that you should totally switch to the opposite polarity what i'm saying is that you need to bring more of the opposite qualities so that you can achieve a balance and it's also true that ironically signs and oppositions they are also connected and each represents something that the other sign also includes so the balance is really really important and trying to bring some of the qualities that will make you whole that will bring more of the things that you might be missing or you may not be paying so much attention to so the quick version focus on your self-expression, on your creativity and individuality. And at the same time, try to consider what would be the benefit for other people as well. Also, what are the ideas that you need to change? And it's all related also to freedom and individuality and feeling like you have your own strength and individuality and yet you're also part of something bigger so forgetting about one of those can be problematic so this opposition can help us to remind ourselves about this and also one thing i want to add here is that leo represents more the heart it represents our desires And Aquarius is more about the mind and some kind of important ideas. So symbolically, we also need to find the balance between the heart and the mind. And I think that generally this is something very important. So let's take a look at the picture we have in front of us for this particular full moon. The exact degrees are... Two degrees Leo for the sun and two degrees Aquarius for the moon. So first of all, check if you have any planets or cusps of houses which are close to those degrees. And if that's the case, then of course this full moon will play a more significant role in your life. Keep in mind that if you also have planets in the last few degrees of Cancer or Capricorn, you will also be triggered by this full moon stronger than other people. And what that means is that you need to do more of those stuff, more clarity, more results, and also releasing more things that you no longer need in your life. Now, let's take a look at the aspects that are also affecting this full moon. I think that the most important one is Pluto. Even though Pluto is in Capricorn, it's still pretty close to the moon, conjunction with the moon. And also it means that it has an opposition with the sun. Even though it's out of signs, it may still bring its impact. What I mean by out of sign is that when Pluto is in Capricorn, normally it would make an opposition with the planet in Cancer. But the sun is in the beginning of Leo. So the signs are different, but 
the aspect is there because of the orb, is because of the range we are using. That changes a little bit the situation, but we still have this opposition. And Pluto requires some big transformations. Pluto requires also lots of focus, lots of dedication. And it may bring us lots of concentration on something particular. With the moon, Pluto can make things also emotionally more intense, but it can also help with some kind of emotional release and emotional transformation. And we know that normally those phases, they are also pretty intense emotionally. So don't be afraid of more intense emotions, but also allow them to be and then let them go. On the other side, we also have Mercury close to the sun. There is a 10 degree orb, but it's still there. So I would consider it, even though it's also out of science. But Mercury can also trigger the mind. And it could be related to some kind of ideas that we may have. It could be related to also changes in the area of communication. And it's pretty interesting that we have kind of like connection between the sign of Cancer and Leo and also another one between Capricorn and Aquarius because Pluto is in Capricorn, Moon in Aquarius, Mercury in Cancer, Sun in Leo. So all of those signs are somehow triggered from this full moon and those signs are pretty different and there might be also some kind of transitioning between the energies and the way we feel and again of course it's all about the balance the most beneficial aspect of this full moon is coming from neptune neptune has a trine with the sun and it's a little bit far away from the moon but it's again part of the full moon for sure so neptune can help us neptune can bring us support and all of that may bring lots of healing energy and deeper understanding. So through our intuition, through more compassion, we can help ourselves, we can help other people, and this may have a very calming impact. If Pluto brings intensity and power and sometimes struggles, Neptune is bringing deeper understanding and healing and very calming energy so i personally love this combination another thing that is interesting so we have an opposition between venus and jupiter and at the same time both of them are having aspects with the full moon jupiter a quincunx with the sun venus semi sextile with the sun so those are also very interesting cases when there is an any aspect between two planets and both of them also trigger a full moon. It accentuates the aspect even more and somehow the topics of this aspect become topics of the full moon as well. And when we talk about opposition between Venus and Jupiter, we talk about different values what we value personally that's what venus represents and jupiter represents more cultural values or what other people value so again it's more us or the individual and their values and then the culture or the society and if you notice it's also resonating with the general theme of this full moon our individuality that's represented by the sun and then the community or the society that we belong to. So this is a pretty accentuated topic. It can trigger also bigger events in social meaning and social context, um, but it's also about us. So maybe uh, um, analyzing this and 
bringing more clarity about what is it that you really value, what is it that you really want, and then what is it that you are pursuing, maybe just because it's culturally accepted and expected for, from you. And the more honest we are, the better. And also letting go of things that are no longer needed is also very important. And I'm not saying that we should focus only on ourselves. Sometimes we may realize that the group or the society for the current moment is more important. And uh, this is a big topic because Jupiter is much stronger than Venus. Venus is in a fall position. Jupiter is in the sign that uh, he rules. So Jupiter dominates and the needs of the group for a certain period may also be more important. So think about also in this way venus represents more the pleasure that we can experience kind of in the present relaxing having a little fun right now or communicating with someone who will bring you joy that's more like a simple pleasure and something that we can experience right now on the other side jupiter represents more long-term goals so the pleasure and the joy that we will experience in the future after we achieve something so in certain way the topic is also can you perhaps neglect your comfort in the present in the name of achieving something more significant in the future that will bring you more joy as well it's the question about delayed gratification and Of course, it's something very important. And this moon is triggering this topic as well. Sorry, did I say new moon? I meant full moon. (laughs) So also the moon, which is in Aquarius, triggers something like that as well. Aquarius is a sign related to the future. So it's about our future vision, what we are pursuing long term, what would be important as an idea of having it in the future. So the present and the future, this is also another thing that we should neglect. Uh, Sorry, we should uh, balance. Uh, What I wanted to say also that I'm not saying that we should neglect totally our joy right now, but it's more about priorities. So we may take the conscious decision that for now, we won't pursue the immediate joy and pleasure and all of that is in the name of something that would be more beneficial for us in the future so it's a very interesting situation as you can see and it's confirmed by other energies as well so it's not just the full moon but it's also this venus jupiter aspect that plays an important role around this full moon So those were the most important aspects of this full moon and what we should concentrate on and how we should use it. Now I want to share with you just a couple of words and ideas for each sign and what they should focus on. We are exploring, of course, the whole axis triggered by the full moon with more emphasis on the moon because that's the area where you may get the insights or more clarity or make changes or release something and achieve results so pay more attention to this area for aries the triggered axis is 11th fifth house with the possibility to make changes in the area of your ideals, long-term visions, friendship, community, and some kind of socially important goals for you. For Taurus, the axis which is triggered is 10th and 4th house with the possibility to make changes in terms of your career, in terms of your social status and something visible for other people prosperity, success, achievements, all of that is also very important for Taurus. For Gemini, the triggered axis is ninth and third house 
with the possibility to make changes in terms of your long-term goals, in terms of your beliefs, your values, and also the knowledge and wisdom that you can gather. For Cancer, the full moon triggers some more intense houses like 8th and 2nd house with more emphasis on deeper transformations. Energetically, you can also achieve lots of things. So a very important time to balance your own energy and also focus more on the exchange. It could be a time of transformations. It's a great time for energy practices and for anything that will allow you to connect energetically with other people. Resources are also pretty important. For Leo, the full moon will trigger seven and first house. Of course, it's very important and it's a question of balancing relationships and your role there. So how can you improve this? Is there something that you need to let go? It could be an emotion. It could be a memory. It could be something that you are over focusing on. So finding this balance in the area of relationships is very important. For Virgo, the full moon will trigger sixth and twelfth house with focus on sixth house where you can make changes, meaning your health, your work, your daily routines, how you can improve that. Is there also a habit that you want to quit? Could it be smoking or overeating or maybe not having a good sleeping habits? Think about it and make the needed changes. For Libra, the full moon will trigger fifth and 11th house with the focus on love, romance, the things that you are most passionate about, your children, your creative activities, what you can change there. Is there something that you need to embrace? Is there something that you need to let go? It could be very, very beneficial for you. For Scorpio, the full moon will trigger fourth and tenth house with focus on family and the possibility to let certain things go as negative memories, ideas. If there is some kind of dependency on your family or other people, it's also a great time to bring more freedom into this area. And overall, it's time of deeper transformations on a deeper level. It's more triggering your soul, your deepest emotions as well. So work with those topics. For Sagittarius, the full moon will trigger third and ninth house. The major area of transformations could be your communication with other people, friendship, your ideas that you are focusing on a daily basis and generally the question about practicality and being present. For Capricorn, the full moon will trigger second and eighth house with the possibility to change something on a very practical, measurable level. Anything that has to do with your financial situation, with your own resources. Is there something that you need to change or you would like to change and overall you can see some results and transformations in this area. Again, also pay attention to your energy. Energy balance directly affects our resources on every level, including the material one. For Aquarius, of course, this is probably the biggest full moon during the whole year. It triggers first and seventh house with the major focus on yourself and your actions and your activities and everything that you represent. So big opportunities for personal transformations and kind of like a new reset and the beginning of something very big and very significant. So it's a big one. And finally, for Pisces, the full moon will trigger 12th and 6th house with lots of possibilities for deep psychological transformations. 
working with the past, working with the subconscious mind, all kinds of spiritual practices, meditations may have a very healing and releasing influence for you. And overall balancing work and free time, also having some time together, spending some time alone and uh, thinking about the things that you want on a deeper level. This can also be very healing and transformational for Pisces. So this was our full moon in Aquarius Leo overview. Happy full moon to everybody. Don't forget to sign up for our new platform on Clubhouse. You can find the links below or just search for me there, Marina Stuichkova. It's pretty exciting and I think that it's a great platform for communication. Don't forget to check for other resources on Marstars dot net and let me know in the comments what are you most excited about what is this full moon trigger in your chart is there something that you are anticipating is there something that you are wondering how it will unfold in your life let me know in the comments i would love to help you with more insights happy full moon and i will see you soon